What's up guys, Hugo Crave here, and there's a lot going on in the FPS space right now. You've got Vanguard and the release of Apex new map. On the horizon, we're looking at Battlefield and Halo Infinite. So there's basically a lot of options for first person gamers out there, and these are pretty good times. Now, I'll eventually have to give Apex a go and its new map and the new hero, but for now, let's talk about Vanguard. Now, the TLDR is that it's a familiar and good shooter, even for casuals. Let's go over the details from a graphics, plot, and gameplay standpoint. It's a Call of Duty game, so you can expect very nice visuals. If it's your first time playing COD, then it's going to wow you. If you've been playing or following the series for the last three years, then there's nothing really new here. You've got excellent presentation, whether it's the campaign or the multiplayer setting. The environments are very detailed, and as always, the game varies the graphic style, which is more evident in the campaign, as it takes you to different locations around the world. You will see changes in the color tone and brightness depending on where you are. As always, you'll see a nice play in lighting, especially in areas where there's a lot of foliage and the sun is trying to pierce through. This is also evident when you go on missions in war-torn areas where you'll see fires raging in the far off distance or even in small pockets as you go through the story levels. All in all, things are visually good in this year's Call of Duty, although I wish it were set or the, the plot was set in modern times or they just simply continued the story from Modern Warfare 2019. There are some graphical glitches in the game, but it don't happen all too often. Now, from a sound experience, it's a Call of Duty game, so you can expect excellent sound or voice acting from a range of familiar actors from other games like Laura Bailey and Dominic Monaghan, who also have their facial features in the game, so that's pretty excellent. And the background music and sound effects are on par from what you would expect from games like these. Now, I will highlight one thing though, the sounds from guns sound better or more, I would say, audible compared to the beta. It still has that muffled feeling, but it is better to uh, the experience from weeks back. The plot. Well, in terms of the plot, it my take on it is may also tie into the fact that I don't like the World War II setting. If I try to be objective about it though, the campaign is just workable. The main storyline is actually very short and what stretches the whole thing is a series of flashbacks from the different special forces operators. Now, these flashbacks make it possible to see World War II events from all around the globe. and. There are times when the game tries to shock you with emotional plot elements, but if you played COD games or even other heavily story-driven games like The Last of Us, then what you will see in Vanguard is, yeah, nothing new. The actors, though, they played their parts expertly, and generally the screenplay is well done, but it's really just the plot that is very uninteresting. So let's make this a very quick one. I'm glad that they did put in a campaign for Vanguard as they do with most COD games, but this year's release seems to easy to forget. When considering which FPS to play first or to buy, it was the gameplay of COD that had a heavy influence on me. When I tried the beta and watched the trailers, all the footage basically, it really reminded me of Modern Warfare. Until now, I still appreciate the gunplay of 2019. Now, the shooting aspect is still tactical in nature, but it doesn't mean it's slow. 
Firing and movements are very deliberate and have less of that arcade feel. When you slide as you sprint, it still feels like going through gravel. So yeah, it is clear as day that Vanguard is not Apex in terms of movement. Now, weapon shots have the right mix of feedback and recoil so that you feel engaged and that shots give off that very satisfying feeling. Gameplay elements are pretty standard or safe as far as Call of Duty games go. From a macro perspective, constant engagement in multiplayer matches gains you experience which ties into leveling operators and guns. Now, leveling your operators allows you to get some skins, some, some quips, or stuff that you can use in the game. They're cosmetics, although some skins may make it harder for others to see your character. Now, what matters though are the gun tweaks you can make which really just affect gameplay. Now, leveling your guns gives you a range of options which can affect how you battle it out in different lobbies. Now, you can have flash hiders to make it so that you're less obvious from afar, or you can opt for attachments that make it better at hip firing, or even improve your aimed out sight speed or ADS speed. There's really a host of options that affect gunplay. Some are very obvious, like the recall control attachment, while others are not so obvious, or at least until you stack some of the abilities. Now, you also have the perk system, which augments or complement the tweaks you make in your guns. They're pretty varied in their approach. One can make you move faster, one lets you, or well, at least lets you know when enemies are using unsilenced weapons, or another that lets you carry around two primary weapons instead of having a pistol or a melee weapon as your secondary. The perks are really useful, but I think Sledgehammer could make some tweaks on how perks are positioned. I like that it gives you options that complement your weapon attachments. Oh, and you also have field upgrades, which are timed abilities that further enhance options in matches, like being able to, let's say, uh, provide ammunition for your team, or dropping a jammer to disrupt enemy radar, or have that dreaded dead silence ability. Now, all these offer options for new players to play around with, while older players will gravitate to more familiar skills and tweaks. For the specifics of gameplay, you still have the map rotations and playlists, which are all based on the maps you encounter in the campaign. Now, as before, you have control over the play modes and not the maps themselves, which is a shame because I'd really like to do away with maps like Red Star and keep maybe maps like Royale, Dome, and maybe Berlin. Now, for the modes, they are the standard fair, and the new one is called Patrol. I think you've seen this in the beta, and it's pretty much... Patrol is pretty much hard point on the move. I personally don't like that new mode, but as mentioned, you do have a way to remove it from your quick playlist, so there is that. What I do like is being able to influence the match pacing, which have three settings, which are tactical, assault, and lit, and basically a mixture of all three of these, which make it a total of four. And as the name implies, it's all about how action-packed the matches are going to be, where I normally favor blitz and then assault at times. Sometimes you won't have any control over it as it will put you in a big map with a slower pacing and it really sucks when that happens, but at least you can sort of nudge the game a bit in your favor. Overall, the gameplay aspect of Vanguard can either feel just safe or pretty good depending on whether you think it's tiring or fun from your point of view. Now, to wrap it all up, I wish I could regard it as high as Modern Warfare 2019, but it's not, mainly because of the setting and the familiarity aspect. It still has very good gunplay with some new maps, although the modes feel somewhat the same. Now, it's a shooter with average campaign plot, excellent sound experience, good-looking graphics, and solid but familiar gameplay. You'll be making a good choice to pick this one up, and if you don't, you've got other options out there. Thanks for watching this, guys. Talk to you soon.